Uh, let me share with you results of our recent study, a study which was performed by an international group of authors uh, in which I was involved, uh, and which resulted in an unexpected prediction, uh, which we also confirmed experimentally. Our prediction was that sodium, one of the best metals, under pressure becomes a non-metal, and uh, so much non-metallic it becomes that it even becomes a transparent dielectric. In the periodic table, sodium is located in the block of metals. These elements which are located in the left part of the periodic table are uh, metals. And sodium, belonging to the first uh, group of the periodic table, is an alkali uh, metal, a uh, metal characterized by an extremely high electrical conductivity, uh, this uh, bright metallic shine mm, and uh, uh, white uh, color, silvery white uh, color. Sodium is almost perfectly described by the nearly free electron uh, model, uh, but under pressure this changes dramatically. This element was discovered in 1807 by one of the greatest chemists of all time, Sir Humphrey Davy, who lived in London and worked at the Royal Institution of Great Britain. Uh, for many years, in fact for a couple of centuries, sodium was believed to be a simple metal. That was actually a name which people used for metals like sodium, potassium, lithium, simple metals. Metals that uh, have no um, D electrons, uh, non-transition non metals, metals which have high electrical conductivities and simple crystal structures. This situation began to change uh, several years ago when scientists from Germany and Denmark, in particular Hansland and Schassen, uh, discovered that under pressure sodium adopts a number of very unusual crystal structures. Let us look at this structure which uh, Hansland and Schassen discovered using their experiments and theoretical calculations at uh, slightly more than one million atmospheres. This structure consists of two types of sodium atoms. These black atoms form a framework and the white atoms fill uh, big holes inside this framework. And this structure is not such a good metal anymore as electronic structure calculations show. Uh, and generally the structure is extremely uh, unusual. In fact, such a structure indicates that sodium might uh, start to become a D metal, a metal with D electrons like in transition metals um, beginning to be occupied. Uh, a few years later, uh, British scientists found that uh, sodium exhibits a very unusual melting curve. Um, as you can see, at first the melting temperature increases with pressure. And then uh, it begins to bend down and at pressures of about uh, one million atmospheres, slightly more than one million atmospheres, exactly where structures like these are formed, it has a deep minimum uh, and sodium melts actually at room temperature. So usually, as you compress uh, materials, uh, their melting uh, temperatures increase. For sodium, the behavior is much more complex. And uh, at very high pressures, it actually uh, can melt uh, at room temperature. Uh, theoretical calculations and this number of uh, unusual experimental observations suggest that sodium indeed might become a D-metal, if you like, a transition metal under pressure, dramatically changing its chemistry from a simple, nice, white, silvery metal to something uh, which behaves very differently. Uh, a further step was taken by our group, in particular my uh, good colleague and friend, uh, professor of physics from China, Yan Ming Ma. Yan Ming Ma predicted uh, a new, yet another crystal structure in sodium and predicted that it will be a dielectric predicted that at pressures of about 2 million atmospheres, sodium will transform into a red transparent dielectric. Just imagine this experiment, just imagine this magical experiment when you take a white silvery metal, squeeze it by about a factor of 5 under pressures of about 2 million atmospheres, and from white silvery metal it turns into a red transparent dielectric. Ma and myself, we also predicted that as you increase pressure further um, from red dielectric, sodium will turn into yellow dielectric and eventually will become colorless, like glass. So if you like, you could even make 
windows out of sodium at ultra high pressures. But of course, that is just a joke. Um, we were puzzled by this unusual prediction and contacted an experimentalist from Germany, Mikhail Yeremets, who is also pictured uh, on this slide. And indeed, our predictions were confirmed. So let me concentrate a little bit more on our predictions. This is a structure that we have predicted. Such a structure has never been observed in any of the elements. And electronic structure calculations showed that electrons will be concentrated, valence electrons will be concentrated not on the atoms, but in the empty space of the structure, right here. This is also a pretty unusual situation. We have predicted that as you increase pressure, it will become more and more difficult to excite electrons and make them conduct electricity. They will become more and more localized. An experiment fully confirms our predictions. Let us look here. This is what sodium looks uh, at pressures of up to uh, slightly more than one million atmospheres uh, or 100 gigapascals. It's white, it's silvery, shiny metal. If you increase pressure to 1.5 million atmospheres, it transforms into a black non-reflecting material, which is either a poor metal or even a semiconductor. We increase pressure further, and indeed at 2 million atmospheres, sodium becomes transparent, it becomes uh, reddish in color, and as you decrease pressure, you revert back to a white transparent metal. So this magical experiment that we have conceived in our minds was realized by Yerimets in Germany, and indeed it proves that our predictions were correct. The structure of this new form of sodium is very peculiar. It is not really described well by uh, classical theories of close packing of atoms, but instead it's described by the close packing of these localized electron pairs. Uh, the structure was predicted using our evolutionary methodology for crystal structure prediction. The thing is that up to recently it was extremely difficult, often not possible, to predict structure of a material knowing just the chemical formula. The reason that there are so many different possibilities that in which you can place atoms inside crystal structure, that the number of possibilities defeated any reasonable calculation. The number was truly astronomical. Uh, however, the method that I and my graduate student have uh, invented solves this problem to a very large extent and allows prediction of pretty complicated crystal structures. This is the method that Yan Ming Ma used um, together with me, and uh, he found uh, this uh, exciting new phase of sodium. We published a paper in Nature in uh, March 2009, paper about this discovery. Let me go back to the structure of the new phase and uh, describe it from somewhat different uh, position. The structure, as I mentioned to you, can be described as close packing of the electron pairs, yeah, of these electron pairs lo localized in the empty space. And it is because these electron pairs are so localized uh, that electricity cannot be transmitted. Uh, for electrons, it will take very long jump and very high um, activation energy to, to jump from one of these sites to another. However, the structure can also be represented as a close packing of atoms, but squeezed by a factor of two. Extremely strong squeezing. Close packings are exactly what you see um, in the packing of uh, cannonballs, if you are um, in the military in the 19th century, and it's also what you see in the marketplace, where you see oranges arranged in a close packed array. So our structure of sodium corresponds to this array of uh, oranges squeezed along one axis by a factor of two. So these oranges will be probably completely spoiled by this compression. And you can see that in the maps of electron localization function, there are indeed these very strong peaks uh, of electron localization in the empty space. None of the other alkali metals have um, quite uh, a similar behavior. What happens with sodium? Why sodium becomes transparent? Why sodium develops this maximum of electron uh, concentration in the empty space? 
The model was actually proposed by Neaton and Ashcroft about 10 years ago. It does not completely translate in our case, but the spirit of it is correct in our case too. Here we have atoms at a large distance uh, from each other at normal conditions. The distribution of the electrons is spherical, it's S electrons. Cores of atoms do not overlap. You increase pressure, cores begin to overlap, and since cores, these uh, chemically inert regions around the atoms, since they repel the valence electrons, valence electrons find nothing better to do than to concentrate in places which are maximally distant from the cores. They concentrate in the empty space. Since cores overlap, um, electrons have nothing else to do than to concentrate in the empty space. As a result, you have this mutual packing of cores and uh, localized valence electrons. If you wish, you can describe this situation as an electrode. Electrode, a compound of um, ionized atomic cores and localized electron pairs. It's like an ionic compound where the role of the anion is played by these localized electron pairs. So here you see this beautiful maxima of the electron localization function in the empty space. Actually, if you look at a compound like that, what is the chemical bonding in this compound? Is it really ionic? But anions are not real atoms. They're just fake atoms, electron pairs. Is it covalent? But the maximum of electron density are not between atoms. They're in the empty space. Is it metallic? Well, certainly not. I think it just shows that such new phenomena can extend um, the limits of chemical thinking. They can challenge the traditional chemical thinking. And we can certainly expect new phenomena in materials like that. So what is the outlook of this work? What is the significance? We have shown that if you compress even a very good metal, you can get an insulating state. This is what several people expected before, people like Ashcroft uh, and Neaton. But this is something that we have proven with experiments, and this is something that we have observed to reach extreme extent. We transform to a wide gap transparent dielectric. The same phenomenon can, in principle, occur in other elements. And one can imagine that in some uh, giant planets and in stars where atoms are very strongly overlapping with each other, you can also form perhaps similar mm, dielectric states. This can be observable because magnetic fields of planets and stars are generated by uh, motion, convective motion of electrically conducting uh, liquids in the interior of the planet. Now, if the liquid is no longer electrically conducting, if it's an electrode state, then you will probably notice it through the weakening of the magnetic field. Furthermore, the very fact that sodium, an archetypal metal, an alkali metal, becomes non-metallic under pressure, challenges the validity of the periodic law, of the periodic system, at ultra-high pressures. This may sound shocking, but in a way we knew it before. This is just yet another illustration of this phenomenon. This is a beautiful picture that has been prepared uh, a couple of decades ago by uh, my Russian colleagues on the basis of their experiments. Look here. Uh, at ambient conditions at very low pressures, such as one atmosphere or zero atmospheres, we have this beautiful periodic dependence of the atomic volume on the atomic number. And this periodic dependence of atomic volume actually is one of the bases of the periodic law. As you increase pressure to 3 million atmospheres or 300 gigapascals, you can see the same periodic dependence, but strongly dampened. Um, and you can see that this periodicity is really not as manifest as before. And this you, if you increase pressure to 10 million atmospheres, any periodicity disappears. And in fact, at conditions uh, of pressures like uh, um, 10 million atmospheres and more, um, many elements are now described by the uh, free electron gas model. And uh, rules of chemistry will no longer apply here. So we can see that under pressure, indeed, the periodic law becomes invalid. 
And one of manifestations of this is the fact that sodium and alkali metal becomes transparent at high pressure, at experimentally reachable and experimentally reached pressure. We have predicted a crazy phenomenon using theoretical simulations. Experiment confirmed it only afterwards. I think it shows to you the predictive power of modern theory. However, um, we predicted it using heavy, um, highly involved calculations, and it would be um, very nice if we could also predict it using our intuition, without the need for uh, heavy computing. Uh, at this stage, however, um, our main tools are uh, heavy computing. Uh, our intuition is not sufficiently developed to predict such complicated and unusual phenomena uh, at extreme conditions. Uh, in other words, our understanding, our deep intuitive understanding of high pressure phenomena is still uh, very much under development, is still not uh, fully there. It is very important to understand the behavior of matter at extreme conditions because most of our universe is matter at extremely high pressures. And we are on the way uh, to achieve this goal.